Take a look at this map of Nashville. There are three different colors in these highlighted areas, and I'm curious if you know what they mean. Now, I'm gonna share with you what they mean, but I'm curious if you can guess what they might mean. Before we move into this, we have mortgage rates are skyrocketing right now. In fact, when we look, we hit another recent high of 709. A little over a month ago, I was seeing a lot of people get quoted in the fives. I had a buyer that was ready to buy, and then mortgage rates literally pulled them out of the market, which kind of stinks. It's really sad. But why are mortgage rates going up? Of course, everybody's an expert on why they're going up after they go up. Nobody predicted it. Although I said I thought they would go up, I didn't know when, and I certainly thought they could go down too. So I'm not even gonna take credit for my mortgage rate warnings other than to say, you just don't know where they're gonna go and you need to be careful. Always buy a house that you can afford and lock in that long-term 30-year fixed rate. And then if they drop and you're able to refinance, great. But don't put so much pressure on yourself that you buy a house you can't afford hoping the rates drop. You just don't know. Nobody knows where they're gonna go. But this actually coincides with Trump coming up in the polls. And there's a lot of people saying it's a Trump trade, that the bond market's warning about seeing an inflationary dynamic take hold in a Trump administration. Now, Larry Summers actually warned about this. And he warned the Biden administration when they did their second stimulus. I think this is the least responsible macroeconomic policies we've had in the last 40 years. And of course, he was 100% right. Now he's warning that the next administration could be very inflationary and that we could see mortgage rates, you are not gonna believe this, in the tens. I'm not even kidding. Listen to what he said. I don't think there's been a more inflationary presidential economic policy platform in my lifetime. This could easily be a prescription for a 10% mortgage rate something that I lived through when I bought my first house, but that I didn't think we were gonna see again in uh, the United States. And if you don't think that the Trump administration is concerned about this, listen to what J.D. Vance said on a podcast with Tucker Carlson. The, the thing I really worry about on, on bond markets is, okay, we have, call it 1.6 to $2 trillion in debt every single year in this country getting added to the national debt. And the only thing that really makes that serviceable is that interest rates are still pretty low, right? They're about four and a half percent, right? Now, if interest rates go to 8% and you're actually spending way more to service the debt than you are on actual like good services and infrastructure for your country, like that can become a huge spiral that could take down the finances of this country. We've never had that in 200 plus years of being an American Republic. We've never had a, a true debt spiral in this country. So I really worry about do the bond markets, do the international investors, the people who are getting rich off of globalization, the people who've gotten rich from shipping our manufacturing base to China, the people who've gotten rich from a lot of wars, do they try to take down the Trump presidency by spiking bond rates? So come Tuesday, if rates skyrocket, at least you've been warned, at least you know it's a possibility. But again, they could go up, they could go down, I don't know where they're gonna go. Let's go to the Nashville market. Let's actually look at active listings. Active listings have peaked for the year, okay? We have the most options we've had all year long at the end of October. A lot of listings got canceled or expired. I had a listing, they expired at the end of October. I told my seller, I said, if you're gonna drop your price, drop your price in the spring. And there are a lot of sellers taking that advice. There's not a lot of real distress out in the market. You see some in Airbnbs, you're seeing some in that lower price points where they're very interest rate sensitive. But in terms of the market, there are a lot of people in great shape, strong balance sheets, strong incomes, and they're fine. Could prices drop? Absolutely. But the market is very strong in Nashville. Incomes have been growing for two years. Inbound migration has been growing for two years. There's a lot of things that have been really good for the Nashville housing market. Let's take a look at contracts. Contracts, they're actually up year over year, 14% higher than where they were last year. Now, last year at this time, we had just hit 8% mortgage rates. But interestingly enough, it's not all places, okay? Look at Rutherford County. Rutherford County's up almost 20%, 21%. Williamson County's up. This is demand, guys. 
Demand, contract volume is up almost 40% in Williamson County. Just massively stronger, massively stronger than last year. In fact, we really have to go back to late July, early August to see the kind of demand we have right now in Williamson County. I gotta tell you, I've had multiple buyers experiencing this. Doesn't feel like winter. It doesn't feel like things have slowed down. It's pretty wild in Williamson County. On the flip side, Davidson County, which by the way, Davidson County has been the one that struggled. If there's any struggle in Nashville area, it's Davidson County. And I showed you guys this last week here. Let me just show you real quick. Okay, now there's eight states with more inventory than last year in 20, or excuse me, than in 2019. But look at Tennessee. Tennessee's up. Let's take a look at this. October, we can see, look at, look at, look at October. 3,500 listings for, for Davidson County, blowing out of the water anything that they've had in active listings. It's just so different for Williamson. Okay, Williamson's further south. It's where Franklin is. And look, we're up. We're up about 10% in Williamson County. But look at how flat it's been. It really hasn't gotten a lot more listings in the past two years in Williamson County compared to Davidson. When you compare the demand being 40% higher to listings only been 10% higher, we're certainly seeing a lot tighter of a market this year than last year. It's also why we can see that median price is actually hitting 490 for October. Now, Think about this for a second. 490, we ended September at 467. So this is a massive increase, almost 10%. We'll see if it ends there, right? We're on the second day. There's still some coming in, but but let's say it ends there at 490. That is a massive move up in median price. However, when your contract volume is coming from your most expensive county being up 40%, guess what? The mix of prices are going up. Now we can see this because even when we look at this 490, look at the sales price per square foot. It's 239. If we look at the median sales price per square foot in September, it was 238. So median sales price per square foot isn't going up. People are buying larger houses. They're buying larger houses because they're buying in different neighborhoods. This is a mix change. It's not necessarily a price change, which brings me back to this chart. Okay, this chart, you've got orange, purple or red and green, okay? What do those colors mean? In 2022, prices peaked orange. In 2023, prices peaked red. In 2024, prices peaked, that's green. Okay, you look at this map in about half of the neighborhoods that I look into on a regular basis, the areas I looked into, they still have prices that peaked in 2022. And you can see this, you can just zoom in, like, let's take this Green Hills area right here. Look at price. Price, 417 in 2022. Where is it at now? It's at 381. Prices in this area peaked two years ago. Hey, look at Forest Hills. Prices peaked at 504 a foot in Q3 of 2022. Even though it's been strong, it still hasn't gotten back above that 500 price point. Some of the upper quartile is doing really well. That's not surprising. There's a lot of really expensive houses selling in that area. It's pretty wild. Okay, we come down here to West Haven. West Haven still hasn't breached its 20, 2022 prices at 470 a foot. West Haven is one of the highest volume neighborhoods in Williamson County, selling about one in 20 houses are in uh, West Haven for all of Williamson County. It's pretty wild. Peaked at 470, we're now only at 440 a foot. Even though there's a lot of green, okay, that green means that it hit a new price per square foot high in 2024. There's still a lot of orange out there. Not all neighborhoods have recovered from their prices in 2022. So when people say, oh, Davidson County, it's so bad. Even I say that, right? Look at Davidson County. Look at all the green. There are places that have hit new highs this year in Davidson County. Look at Williamson County, a lot more green in Williamson County, but there's still plenty of orange in Williamson County. The point is, is that a lot of this aggregated data out there, a lot of this data you use to get an idea and a sense of where things are, you gotta understand there's still hyper-local nuance to it. That's why some people in this market right now feel like it's crashing, and at the same time, people right down the street can say, what are you talking about? It's not crashing, it's only going up. 
two people experiencing very different scenarios, and you can see it right here on this map. Depending on the neighborhood you live in, you might think prices are crashing or prices are going up. I am gonna build out the rest of this map. I'm gonna build it out all the way through Lebanon, Murfreesboro, Columbia. If you want access to this map and you want access to these neighborhoods, if you just reach out to me and you can either use my team, which we specialize in some areas, but not all areas, but even if we can't help you, we can refer you to another agent. Look at this agent tracker I have, okay? It just ranks people based on not just volume, how often they get a discount on their transactions, and then how large of a discount they get. So this agent ranking tool, while it's not perfect, it's gonna help you find an agent that will advocate on your behalf or has a consistent reputation for advocating for a lower price for buyers. And I'm happy to do that. That supports this channel, that supports me creating all these unique views. And you can get access to this tool for free. Even if you're an agent, if you're a real estate agent, feel free to reach out because I am going to make this available. And with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you next Saturday.